and I really quit just pretending to have it all together and pretending that everything is going to work out if I just keep steady at this pace in this place without purpose. Hey guys, it's Editing Scala and I wanted to come on and say that this video is really me like expressing my experience of last semester. This is months in advance now, so yes, this is the fall semester of 2022. <laughs> but I hope you'll listen with open ears and feel free to ask questions. I'd love to expand upon this in another video. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> wow. Hello everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Scala and I'm really glad that you're here. Yes, the title is true. I have decided to quit um, or to drop the MARC 1 program at Harvard. I was a second year MARC 1 student, Masters of Architecture student at the Graduate School of Design here at Harvard, and I am now a Masters of Design Studies student with a focus in publics or in the public domain, um, also at the GSC, also still at Harvard. So I quit, but I didn't quit. <laughs> I found better. I found purpose for myself. So I'm really glad that you guys are here and really this video is one uh, hello and welcome back because it's been a while um, as well as just a catch up on my life and this huge transition and this huge change which has brought so much stress and anxiety but also a lot of peace and joy at the same time. So I'm glad you're here, I hope you stick around. So I wanted to start with, um, I guess, where I've been <laughs> because it's been a few months since I've posted a video. I actually still have the first day of school video and um, another vlog of like events happening at Harvard, but it's, it's felt ingenuine to post them and create content without having like the full story of what's going on in my life. And the last, well, I guess it's been a month now since I've been in this program, <laughs> crazy. Um, but the last month has been really running around and trying to figure out what I can do to make my experience at the GSD what I've hoped it to be. How do I be a grad student who's actually come here to learn and not just to get a degree for the degree's sake? Um, and you all, or I guess you don't all know, you could come from anywhere. I studied architecture in my undergrad. I went to Catholic University, um, studied in a four-year Masters of Science program or Bachelor's of Science program and then straight after, um, got into the GSD studying architecture for my master's. Um, and I am a very driven and a very perseverant person. So this program began as, some, as very overwhelming and fast paced. And I thought that was okay. But as long as I kept that purpose of I'm going to get this degree and I'm going to do the architecture that I want to do, which is community focused, it's public interest design, it's looking at the intricacies of a community and individual people and designing architecture that will benefit um, those people. Um, and I couldn't really find any of that in the work that I've done in my first year at the GSD. It was very form based and aesthetic based and yes, form can influence social factors, but I think there was something deeper that wasn't there. We didn't even have a site for our projects. So, you know, in creating a narrative and understanding people, you obviously need a place first <laughs> and the people themselves as well. So um, my first year was a lot of like running around, figuring out if I should just stick in this program right now because, you know, it's just the basics of it. And we're getting into architecture because there are people who have never done architecture before um, as well in my program. So, you know, we're starting with the basics and we're building up. Um, and it was like that. I've talked to um, many people about it, professors, and I just never got to that point of finding purpose within the individual work I was doing. I was doing work as if I just had to get it done um, to learn, you know, the intricacies of like the program or, you know, the given restrictions that we, we had. And um, that was fine and dandy, but it wasn't enough for me. This was a grad school program. I had done the architecture and the basics of architecture in my undergrad, albeit in a different way, but this was not why I came here, um, to relearn form. So, um, that was something that just like bred throughout like this anxiety and stress and confusion as to what I was doing all of my first year. But I was encouraged by my peers who are wonderful and advisors and, um, all those people that I said I've talked to. 
um, to just stick it out because this year, my second year core studio, which is the studio that we are all are required to take for the first two, two full years, um, it's going to become more and more integrated. And I agree that it did become more and more integrated and it was exciting at first, but then um, I got to a point three weeks into the semester where I realized that I was still doing this thing where I was present, I was pre preparing work, so I had something to present and then you know, I was interested in these other things and I would sit there and research them, but then I'd have to go back to producing because, you know, you have to produce to, to show, to like do, to, you know, work. And that's just life in general, but I, there was a point of me that was like, the joy that I'm finding here is in the search. It's in the like 12 page documents that I create, understanding the site and the people and what context is, and then the program itself. And I, again, like this just tension of what I was, I, was interested in doing and what I was actually producing, there it, it became just this, um, I don't know, it became very overwhelming, put it simply. So um, kind of the last straw for me in leaving this program was one day uh, we had, we were having our first review, individual review, we had had partner reviews in the first like two weeks of class, but our third week, or was it fourth? Third or fourth week we were having um, individual reviews on our projects. And I had done everything quote unquote right. I had my model done, models done. I had printed my drawings and everything was ready to go. I even got like six, seven hours of sleep that night, which is pretty good for architecture, you know, you know. Um, and I just felt like I don't want to present this work. Like I just didn't want to show it. I didn't want to talk about it a lot of what we do here in architecture is talk um and we, we produce so much but then when it comes to presenting your project what you say can influence anything like if you you can talk your way through anything and that's a valuable skill and i appreciate it but i knew that a lot of what i was doing would be just talking to appease an audience it happened in the past where i had, had projects where i like i created this narrative and um a story and tried to tie in like a loose uh, community aspect of it and I'd get like just phrases like okay this is beautiful or this is I'm, I really appreciate you engaging the community and then it was okay let's move on to the form let's move on to the aesthetics let's move on to like the changes in form that have influenced society rather than like the narrative that you've created and understanding the people and how that's influenced what you're doing right now and I understand that architecture is a physical built object. I don't, I don't like the word object actually when it comes to architecture, but um, I understand the idea behind that and why it could have been, it would have brushed off, like the narrative was brushed off. But again, that was why I wanted to pursue a master's in architecture was to marry narrative and people and society with architecture and design, not to continue to be a formal form based, um, object I like I you know like <laughs> and in my reviews then became pretty short because I like I spent enough enough time explaining the things that I cared about and I was like hoping to get into the the questions and the ponderings for those aspects but it never really came to fruition and you know that's something that that was a red flag <laughs> that was a red flag that I shouldn't have ignored um back then but you know I let it be so three weeks in sitting there like everything's printed i actually went to mass that day if you're not if you don't know i'm catholic um christian and my faith really is integrated into every single thing that i do so just listening to that and saying a genuine prayer asking for the intercession of our lady and our lord to just tell me if this is the right thing to do like what am i doing here um why do i have everything completed why is everything done but nothing feels right like i shouldn't be I don't need to present it. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna be over dramatic, <laughs> honestly, cause people change and people move on and people transition, but coming from a background of, you know, you have to work and you have to get things done. I come from, my parents are immigrated from Nigeria. So just the amount of work that they've done to be here, you just start to, your whole self is brought to the table when you're making big decisions. Everyone's had these um, experiences before. So kind of just like everything came to a head of like, okay, what do I do with this? I just made sure I printed all of my work. I left it on my desk and the mid review was that day, but I went up to student affairs and I walked into the office and I was like, basically like, Lord, 
whatever I say in this office, whatever happens, this is the decision. Like, this is it. Like, that's all. Um, and I walked in and I couldn't even get a word out. I just started crying and I said, I just don't know what to do. <laughs> and I can laugh about it now. I felt so dramatic, but I'm so grateful for how I was received into that office. Um, right at the front desk, they were like, you're in the right place. And I really was in the right place. We just had a really good conversation and made like actionable steps. And I was just very honest with her. She didn't know my story whatsoever um, about like just how I was feeling, what was going on, how I've been dealing with this hurt for a while. Like this whole, all of last year, like was so much more than just me not, you know, wanting to complete a project. It was, it was mentally draining, it was physically draining and it just felt purposeless. So to go through all of that was just not worth it. Um, my heart wasn't in it. And uh, being very honest with, with her was great because we really did make a plan and it ended up in me leaving the program um, that day making that decision for myself was really difficult but it was it needed to be made um, and crazy enough I had applied last year I was encouraged to apply um, by a few people but I applied for the master design studies program that I'm currently in right now um, I actually ended up submitting the application the day of because I wasn't sure. I remember like it was December and I was like, I don't know, what should I do? And I was literally visiting my friend in Florida and she was like, yeah, you can absolutely, you know, just do your application today. Like we don't, we don't have to hang out. Literally the best friend ever, Lindsay, I love you. <laughs> um, and that's what I did. I'm here now because I had that, um, I had applied and accepted. So thank the Lord, like really he's present throughout all of this craziness. Um, and that the next day I ended up going to um, the pro seminar class for my program, which is within the public domain. So Publix pro seminar, the amount of excitement and engagement it just felt so involved and seen and like people asked me questions and it was such a small class. It was only 12 people, 14, maybe 14 people, um, which was just, amazing like it's one discussions are about so Publix is really about human groups and their roles in society so it's the intersection of design planning and policy I'd say and it's just an incredible opportunity to discuss ideas and understand design from various point of views so again people are taken from different disciplines mostly architecture I believe but the beauty of like the integration of knowledge where we can actually have conversations about what we've done in the past and integrate them into what we're learning now is amazing. And I think the MRC1 program is trying to get at that in the multiple different, you know, backgrounds people have coming in and you kind of see it through people's projects. So I've made it now to the MDES program. For a second, I wasn't sure if I was going to be a student at all this semester because because I dropped studio completely. I now have I had to find the credits to make up for it and um, I ended up finding and doing an independent study. Oh my gosh, all of this to say, we've gone through a pretty huge transition and there have been tears, there have been sad moments, but there's been an incredible amount of joy and I have so much gratitude for every single person involved in this process. I can't thank them enough. It's crazy that I've gotten here because you know, the me last year could never, would never, did not actually, so that's why we're still here right now. Um, but I'm grateful that I can also take you guys along this journey and show you that, I don't know, maybe I'm not showing you anything, <laughs> but I, I think, I hope this at least inspires you to make changes that are good for you. Really evaluate what you need to be successful in the space that you're in. And I am disappointed about not getting my MARC 1 and the idea of licensure is now somewhat up in the air. And that was really an important goal for me personally but maybe it's being reshaped. And I'm just gonna again, be open to God's plan for my life and walk through that with grace and confidence. And you know, I'll fall and I'll get confused, but I'll get back up again and follow in his footsteps. And that's all that really matters right now. I'm learning to take things one step at a time and moment by moment. <laughs> so I hope to continue to vlog and show you guys this process and please send me your requests. What else would you like to see on this channel? I want to um, produce good for this world and your comments have really lifted me up so much. The ones that I've read that are like, I've never seen the inside of Harvard. I never thought I would. And I didn't know anyone 
similar to me or like me could be there. There's really a lot of just innovation and excitement about life that's here um, that is so unique and I really do believe that anyone could can make it here and thrive here if you have that excitement and that passion so I'm glad that I can share a bit of that with you um, and yeah I'm just so grateful life has been really joyful right now and I really hope it's been for you too and I hope you'll stick around my channel and thank you for being here I'll talk to you all later bye Yeah. <laughs>